Hello friends, welcome to this video about life, one of the most renowned and influential figures in history, Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci was born on April 15, 1452, at the third hour of the night in the Tuscan hill town of Vinci in the lower valley of the Arno River in the territory of Florence. He was the illegitimate son of Messer Piero Frosino di Antonio da Vinci, a Florentine notary, and Caterina, a peasant who may have been a slave from the Middle East. We don't know much about Leonardo's early life, but we do know that he spent his first five years in the hamlet of Anciano, and then lived in the household of his father, grandparents, and uncle Francesco, in the small town of Vinci. His father had married a girl named Albiera, who sadly died young, but who loved Leonardo dearly. As a child, he experienced a couple of notable incidents that he later recorded. One involved a kite dropping from the sky and hovering over his cradle, its tail feathers brushing his face, which he considered an omen. The other occurred when he discovered a cave while exploring the mountains and was both terrified that some monster might lurk inside and driven by curiosity to discover what was within. There's been a lot of speculation about Leonardo's early life. For instance, Vasari, a biographer of Renaissance painters from the 16th century, tells a story about a local peasant who asked Ser Piero, Leonardo's father, to have his talented son paint a picture on a round plaque. Leonardo responded with a painting of snakes spitting fire that was so terrifying that Ser Piero sold it to a Florentine art dealer, who then sold it to the Duke of Milan. Ser Piero used the profit to buy a plaque decorated with a heart pierced by an arrow, which he gave to the peasant. When Leonardo was just 14 years old, he began an apprenticeship with one of the most successful artists of his time, Andrea Dizione, who was also known as Verrocchio. Verrocchio's workshop was located in the heart of Florence and was a hub of intellectual activity, which meant that Leonardo had the opportunity to learn not just artistic skills like drawing, painting, sculpting, and modeling, but also technical skills like drafting, chemistry, metallurgy, metalworking, plaster casting, leatherworking, mechanics, and carpentry. Other famous painters who apprenticed or worked in the workshop include Ghirlandaio, Perugino, Botticelli, and Lorenzo de Credi. According to Vasari, Leonardo collaborated with Verrocchio on his Baptism of Christ, and his painting of the young angel holding Jesus' robe was so superior to Verrocchio's work that Verrocchio put down his brush and never painted again. While this may be an exaggeration, it's clear that Leonardo was a talented artist who contributed significantly to the production of Verrocchio's workshop. In fact, some of Verrocchio's works, such as the bronze statue of David in the Bargello and the archangel Michael in Tobias and the Angel, may have been modeled after Leonardo himself. By the time Leonardo was 20, he had qualified as a master in the Guild of St. Luke, which was the Guild of Artists and Doctors of Medicine. However, even after his father set him up in his own workshop, Leonardo continued to collaborate with Verrocchio because of his strong attachment to his former teacher. Leonardo's earliest known dated work is a drawing in pen and ink of the Arno Valley, which he drew on August 5, 1473. In 1476, court records show that Leonardo and three other young men were charged with sodomy, but were eventually acquitted. After that, there's no record of his work or whereabouts until 1478, but it's believed that he had his own workshop in Florence between 1476 and 1481. During this time, he was commissioned to paint an altarpiece for the Chapel of St. Bernard and the Adoration of the Magi for the monks of San Donato a Scopeto in 1481. In 1482, Leonardo helped bring peace between Lorenzo de' Medici and Ludovico il Moro, Duke of Milan. He wrote a letter to Ludovico describing his engineering and painting skills and even created a silver lyre in the shape of a horse's head, which he brought to Milan. Between 1482 and 1499, Leonardo continued to work in Milan, where he was commissioned to paint the Virgin of the Rocks for the Confraternity of the Immaculate Conception and the Last Supper for the Monastery of Santa Maria del Grazi. During this time, he listed a woman named Caterina among his dependents in his taxation documents, and when she passed away in 1495, her funeral expenditure list suggests that she may have been his mother. While working for Ludovico, Leonardo also designed floats and pageants for special occasions, created plans for a dome for Milan Cathedral, and even modeled a huge equestrian monument called the Gran Cavallo to Francesco Sforza, Ludovico's predecessor. The monument was never finished, but Leonardo had already modeled a giant horse in clay that surpassed the size of any other Renaissance equestrian statue. 
Although 70 tons of bronze were set aside for casting it, the bronze was eventually given to be used for cannons to defend the city from invasion by Charles VIII in 1494. Despite Michelangelo's rude comments about Leonardo's ability to cast the monument, the project was never completed. In 1499, the invading French troops used Leonardo's life-size clay model for the Gran Cavallo as target practice at the start of the Second Italian War. With Ludovico Sforza overthrown, Leonardo, along with his assistant Salai and friend mathematician Luca Pacioli, fled Milan for Venice. There, he worked as a military architect and engineer, devising ways to defend the city from naval attack. When he returned to Florence in 1500, the Servite monks at the monastery of Santissima Annunziata welcomed him and his household as their guests, providing them with a workshop. According to Vasari, it was here that Leonardo created the cartoon of the Virgin and Child with Saint Anne and Saint John the Baptist, a work that drew admirers from all walks of life. In 1502, Leonardo began working for Cesare Borgia, the son of Pope Alexander VI, as a military architect and engineer traveling throughout Italy with his patron. After rejoining the Guild of St. Luke in Florence in 1503, he spent two years designing and painting a great mural of the Battle of Anchiari for the Signoria, with Michelangelo designing its companion piece, the Battle of Cassina. In Florence in 1504, he was part of a committee that relocated Michelangelo's statue of David, against the artist's wishes. In 1506, Leonardo returned to Milan, where many of his most prominent pupils or followers in painting, like Bernardino Luini, Giovanni Antonio Boltraffio, and Marco Dogione, knew or worked with him. However, he did not stay in Milan for long because his father had passed away in 1504. In 1507, he was back in Florence, trying to settle issues with his brothers regarding his father's estate. By 1508, he was back in Milan, living in his own house in Porta Oriental in the parish of Santa Babila. Between 1513 and 1516, Leonardo spent much of his time living in the Belvedere in the Vatican in Rome, where both Raphael and Michelangelo were active at the time. In 1515, Francois I of France recaptured Milan, and in December of that year, Leonardo was present at the meeting between Francois I and Pope Leo VI in Bologna. It was Francois thus who commissioned Leonardo to create a mechanical lion that could walk forward and open its chest to reveal a cluster of lilies. In 1516, Leonardo entered Francois the Fix's service and was given the use of the manor house Clos Luce near the king's residence at the Royal Chateau Amboise. This is where he spent the last three years of his life accompanied by his friend and apprentice, Count Francesco Melzi, supported by a pension totaling 10,000 scudi. Leonardo passed away on May 2, 1519, at Cloulouse in France, with Francoise that becoming a close friend. Vasari records that the king held Leonardo's head in his arms as he died, although this story may be more legend than fact. Vasari also tells us that in his last days, Leonardo sent for a priest to make his confession and receive the Holy Sacrament. Following his will, 60 beggars followed his casket, and he was buried in the chapel of Saint Hubert in the castle of Amboise. Melzi was the principal heir and executor and received Leonardo's paintings, tools, library, and personal effects. Leonardo also remembered his other longtime pupil and companion, Salai, and his servant, Battista di Velusis, who each received half of Leonardo's vineyards, his brothers who received land, and his serving woman who received a black cloak of good stuff with a fur edge. Some 20 years after Leonardo's death, Francois was reported by the goldsmith and sculptor Benvenuto Cellini as saying, There had never been another man born in the world who knew as much as Leonardo, not so much about painting, sculpture, and architecture, as that he was a very great philosopher. Thank you friends for watching this video, I hope you enjoy. Don't forget like the video and subscribe our channel.